if you haven't seen one of these things before, well, I'm not surprised this is an invisible hinge. Joe Sauce, the inventor of the Sauce Invisible Hinge, packed a lot of living into seven decades. Arriving in Montreal in 1894 from his native Romania, this energetic young man started out as a bricklayer and moved to Cleveland after hearing about a construction boom there. Now the idea for the hinge came after tripping over a protruding hinge on a trip back from the Philippines. So you can see where ideas can come from. There's a jig for this, and that's the reason why I'm making this video. They sell a jig, you can probably see it kind of over here. It's two pieces of wood, there's some screws going through. It seems very cumbersome, especially with the technology available nowadays. Now, they also give you this, which allows you to do it by hand. And this pretty much has all the information where you need to make your own jig if you really need to. The actual clearance that's needed from the edge and everything. So, I made this. It has two templates, one for the large side and one for the small. And this is designed to be used with a router. So this one's seen better days. I, I used it a lot. So I figured I'd make a new one and show everybody how it's done. This is cut on a laser. And to add a little bit more to the premise of this video, I wanted to use pieces that are readily available locally. This uh, bushing comes from Harbor Freight, and this is uh, a bit that I bought from Lowe's. Now, obviously, you could have used something bigger, but the only thing they had is a quarter inch, so that's what we're going to go with. There are two dimensions that are critical for this jig to work properly. One is the outside diameter of the piece that rides against uh, the template, and let's see, it is... I believe, yep, 0.3125, which is 5 sixteenths, or for the metric people, I think it's slightly under 8 millimeters. The, that's one. The second part, and the second part that's important, is this distance right here. In between the outside and the closest position where the hinge can be. Now, according to this it is 5.30 seconds. 5.30 seconds for metric people is almost 4 millimeters. I think it's 3.967. So for all intents and purposes is wood. We're going to call that 4 millimeters. And we can call this 8 without any problems. Now... You can choose whatever you want, metric or imperial when you do this. The only other information needed is the dimensions of the hinge. And this is something that you can find in the paperwork that comes with it or you can measure it yourself. These are the pieces one, two, and three. The only other thing we need to do is chamfer these holes just to make sure that when we screw into the, uh, the wood fence that we're going to put in next, going to be nice and flush. Now the next step you have to do is take your piece of wood, take the jig, and basically make it flush with the inside. Then you're basically going to screw it in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you the final product. So 
so this is it. Screw it on. Everything's flush over here. I got the other two pieces here. I'm gonna mount the in the router and then we'll give it a test. So we got a piece of wood clamped in here. This is the jig. I'm gonna put the first piece in here. I got my router and uh, I'm gonna start some work on it. And this is pretty much all she wrote. The hinge fits in here just fine. No, operates as intended. It is a little deeper than it should be, but that's my fault, not the jig's fault. And uh, nice and snug. Perfect hole. You could make a couple of these, and uh, you know, if you have a door or something else that you're trying to do. Fairly quick and easy. Right here. I have one piece over here but I think I made with my previous jig. And as you can see, this is pretty much all I got for you.